So I just want to thank everybody for coming. This is going to be a really special day uh, in the life of our church. And uh, Shauna is always faithful and prepares bulletins for us. And, and so there really are four things that I want to touch on this morning. First, I want to invite all of you to attend our potluck dinner today. It's going to be in our family center. And you know, this is the first potluck dinner we've had as a, as a family group in nearly two years. And uh, so we are going to eat a meal with uh, our new pastor and his family today. And second, as a part of this special day, we are going to have an all-church fellowship. It's not going to be here at the church. It's going to be at the swimming pool, the Sydney pool. That'll begin tonight at 5 o'clock until 7. And so if you uh, consider this your church home, I've been told when you go up, just tell them that you're with the Evangelical Free Church group and you get in for free. So we would uh, encourage you to do that a fun time on it's going to be a hot day. Third, if you have never been baptized, we're not going to do that today at the swimming pool, but <laughs> if you are feeling that God is leading you to believer's baptism, we want to encourage you to do that, and Pastor Kyle is going to have a, a session, a, 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 a class, if you will, on baptism that's going to be in two weeks on August the 1st at 9 o'clock in the morning, so that'll be during our Sunday school time. So if you would like to attend that, that's, that's a requirement, actually, that you would really understand what baptism is about, the way we look at it. Um, there's a sign-up sheet in the foyer, and uh, be sure to, to uh, put your name on that, and Kyle will be looking forward to seeing you in a couple of weeks. And just as a last reminder, you know, we have ministries that go on uh, in the summer, and in particular, our ARC ministry that that uh, Brent Jeffers leads up on the north side. And so we still have a few meals that we need to have placed for August and September. So if you uh, would like to do that, there's as well another sign-up sheet in the foyer. Um, please put your name on that sheet. Well, you know, today uh, we'll go down in our church history as a day to remember. And all of you, whether you're physically here or you're, you're on Facebook Live, can remember this day. Um, it's an important day because we are going to commission Pastor Kyle and Ann and their family uh, as our senior pastor. But you know, yesterday, yesterday was the anniversary of a very important day in the life of our church 38 years ago. It was on July the 17th, 1983. Forrest is going to put up a picture of our church. And... Uh, Anyway, while it's coming up, if it comes up, I'll just tell you that this church first met in a duplex. It was on Illinois Street. It's still there, but obviously not being used uh, as a worship center. But that was the first church building that we have had as a church. And the very first service was on July the 17th, 1983. We have a picture uh, or an image of that very first order of worship. And uh, there it is. It, it hasn't changed uh, dramatically from what we still continue to do and, and how we do it today. And there were a number of people, some among you, uh, who were there. And so as we see these folks standing in front of, of that, that house of worship, we'll put it like that, uh, you may recognize some people uh, who are there. So I believe that uh, Donna Lyon and her husband Chuck were there. I know that Ron and Jane Alshweed were there. Um, Jane doesn't look any older. Ron, you might. Um, but Jim and Jan Wagner, as well as Don and Nancy Cruz, and their young families at the time were all in attendance. So that was uh, an anniversary yesterday to mark 38 years ago. Uh, our church really began here in Sydney. And today we're going to be opening a new chapter uh, in our our history that maybe perhaps could last another 38 years. Only the Lord knows. So this morning, Don Cruz is here, and uh, he has something that he would like to share with all of us about how the Lord has continued to work in his life most recently. And so, Don, come. Well, good morning. Thank you, Bill. And uh, I've got some good news to share. Uh, God answers prayer. You know, this past Wednesday, um, my oncologist said my tumor markers were way down, and I'm in a state of remission. 
although this kind of cancer can come back. We need to remember that. But So I'm praising the Lord. And um, he's answered uh, your prayers as well as ours and many others from around the country. And uh, so we have a great God. Medical science does a great job, but it's our great God in heaven who does the healing. So just praise him for that. You know, last August, I was diagnosed with stage 2 pancreatic cancer. And um, as many of you know, there are rarely any symptoms of pancreatic cancer because you're usually in stage 4 when you find out about it. It's too late to do anything. So uh, the physician quite accidentally found this uh, cancer, and um, so, there's more ho so there was some hope for me. So after taking some chemotherapy, um, surgery, and more chemotherapy, um, you know, I'm recovering. And so I've discovered that God still has a use for me. Otherwise, I'd be in stage four. So I'm excited about getting back into ministry again this fall with uh, our youth group, high school youth group, and, and uh, ministering in Bible studies and encouraging young men, um, life group, and even playing the organ once in a while. But my appetite's beginning to come back, and I'm hoping to gain back some of the 50 pounds I've lost. And um, so having lunch at a funeral, funeral dinner this last week, um, I came back from the dessert table with two desserts in my hand. And I saw Jeff Cook and commented about that, and he says, Don, you can have four desserts. So, <laughs> so I'm on my way up, and I want to thank my dear wife, Nancy, who's waited on me hand and foot all this time and put up with me. And thank you to Ray Cox, who says, we're going to plant, we're going to, we're going to get this cancer out of you. Just pray it right out of you. So again, I want to thank you for your consistent, heartfelt prayers, encouragement, many cards along the way. And most of all, I'm praising God for a great God that we have for answering prayer. Um, some have said to me, how goes the battle? I said, it's not a battle. It's just a privilege to be able to tell other people about Jesus and encourage them in their walk with Christ. So I want to thank you again from the bottom of my heart. And just in closing, um, a scripture from 1 Thessalonians 5.19, or 3.9 says, as Paul was speaking to the church in the last Thessalonica, saying, how we thank God for you. Because of you, we have great joy in the presence of God. So I'm saying these same things to you today. Thank you. Well, thank you, Don, for really that great testimony of how God continues to work in, in people's lives. And uh, he is the great God who is the healer. His name is Yahweh Rophe, the Lord who heals us. And truly, God continues to heal physical afflictions, and we know for sure that he heals mental and spiritual afflictions. And in fact, he is the great God, the great physician who restores life. And he has raised each of us who have received Christ as our Savior to a brand new life forever and ever. And so this morning, let's worship our Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the great shepherd. Uh, who has provided a new pastor shepherd for our church here today to keep our flock together as we, we grow during the next 38 years. So please bow with me as we enter into the Lord's presence. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, you are the one who provides for our needs and our daily requirements. We praise you for establishing this body of believers all those years ago, we thank you for sending Pastor Gordon Langley and Pastor Doug Berkey, who faithfully shepherded this flock for the time that they were here and that you had for them. And this morning, Lord, we acknowledge your call in the lives of Pastor Kyle and Ann as we begin another chapter in the life of our church. So, Lord, bless us this morning as we bless you today. We pray these things in Jesus' name and all of God's people said. Amen. Everybody excited about worshiping, worshiping our Lord today? Hopefully I can speak English today. It's my only language. <laughs> Let's have everyone stand. Well, you know, here's another day, another remarkable day. And, um, you know, as I look at the song we're going to sing, it's, it's interesting. And I'll stare at Kyle and make him feel uncomfortable. And... The song is, Today is the Day. So this is the day that 
and we have a changeover. And so this is exciting. Uh, this is, and it's great to have all of you here today and all of you in the great land of the internet. Um, <laughs> let's just worship and, and just make this a special day. So, Psalm 95, 6 through 7 says, Come, let us bow down and worship. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, the flock under his care. Let's sing, Lord, how I need you.
you're taking your seats. I wanted to let everybody know we had a great late night uh, with our, our senior high and junior high with the Borchardings and all the sponsors leading that. So that was Friday night and nobody got hurt, which is good. And nothing got broken, which is even better. So um, and as you're as you're sitting down, I do just, I, I know how easy it is to hear an announcement and just kind of forget about it, but, but if you have not been baptized and you're thinking, you know, you've, you've been here long enough and you, you know what Pastor Doug used to say, you know, we get baptized because Jesus told us to, and that's true, but, and here's another thing to think about. Yeah, we get baptized because Jesus did it, right, at, at 30, not, not as a kid, as, a, as an adult, he did it. So if you're an adult sitting here thinking, I wonder if I should get baptized, you should. And have it be this year. I, I, I am so excited about baptism. Even, even if it's one person, uh, that's all, it's, it's amazing. So, um, but yeah, just really think about Baptism Sunday. And the class is easy. It's not hard. It's simple. So, there's no excuse, all right? So, let's get baptized. Anyway, um, let's, actually, let's get to the sermon. Uh, so, uh, Proverbs, maybe I saw this as, at like, on a bumper sticker, or maybe it was a meme, I don't know, but I, I read somewhere, and it stuck with me. Proverbs, the book of Proverbs is the owner, owner's manual for life, right? It's just this super practical book before there was advice columns and newspapers, before there was self-help books, before YouTube, way before even the Internet. I know that seems hard to believe, but uh, 
the number one way people got wisdom was by asking their grandparents about life, about, you know, what about this? What about that? How does this work? Or, or if not grandparents, any older, wiser person, because they've been there, they've done it, they've tried it, they've failed, and they want to help others And so, uh, on what they've learned. And so, today, we are going to just do a 30,000-foot overview of, of the book of Proverbs. But uh, we're going to talk about the role of Proverbs, like what are they? Uh, then we're going to look at a few of my favorites, and then what they're not, what the book of Proverbs are not. But essentially, the first seven verses in, in the book of Proverbs, when you open the book, you're, it's like you're kind of reading, uh, nowadays, the back cover of a book kind of just gives the general overview, what this, what is this thing, what is this book I'm holding. It's like that, but it's found in the first seven verses. And so let's, let's read that together. The, it says this, verse 1, the, the Proverbs of Solomon, uh, son of David, king of Israel, for gaining wisdom and instruction, for understanding words of insight, for receiving instruction in prudent behavior, for doing what is right and just and fair. Those are all great things. For giving prudence to those who are simple, knowledge and discretion for the young. Let the wise listen and add to their learning. So again, this book is for everybody. And let the discerning get guidance for understanding proverbs and parables and sayings and riddles of the wise. The fear of the Lord is the very beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. So again, proverbs are for everybody, young, old, desire, you know, anybody desiring to go with the pattern of the universe instead of against it. It's for people desiring to do what is right, just, and fair. It is a book filled with practical wisdom. Now, that word wisdom in Hebrew, it's, it's chokmah. Kind of, again, in the back of your throat, chokmah. You guys can say it. There you go. Good class. Uh, so, it, it, but it implies way more than just head knowledge, right? It's way more than just IQ or, or intelligence. It is that, of course, but it also implies skill, honed skill. Uh, for example, in the book of Exodus, God gave a certain person, Chokmah, to help with the art for the tabernacle, right? So, so this is before the temple. God wanted to dwell with his people in, in this tent, and, but the tent wasn't just a tent. It, it, it was a tent, but it had all this artwork, the imagery of, of, of Garden of Eden, and every, everything, an art piece, and light fixtures, or not fixtures, but light candles or candelabras or whatever, had a purpose and a design, and, and it, it all had a meaning. And, but he gave, God gave this one person, Hokmah, and let's read. This is out of Exodus 31. Uh, then the Lord said to Moses, See, I have chosen Bezalel, son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah, and I have filled him with the Spirit of God, with chokmah, with wisdom, with understanding, with knowledge, and with all kinds of skills to, to do what? To make artistic designs for work in gold and silver and bronze, to cut and set stones, to work in wood, to engage in all kinds of crafts. And so, so, so again, it's that, it's that artist, it's that craftsman that can look at a block of wood or a stone and just see the image, right? Some people have that, that gift, some people do not, but, but it's skill. It, you, it's implied, you have to learn it uh, and and be honed in it and so Bezalel was that guy and so yeah it's head knowledge but it's more than that um, also you see in scripture that scripture teaches that wisdom is what God used to build the universe okay <laughs> Proverbs 8 that famous chapter in Proverbs uh, that God used wisdom to architect creation it's the blueprint it's the Picture a rug and, and the weave of the rug and the pattern that it has. 
Um, we, we read this in Proverbs 8, 22, uh, and, and this is wisdom personified as, as Lady Wisdom. The Lord created me at the beginning of his work, the first of his acts of long ago. Ages ago, I was set up at the first, before the beginning of the earth. When there was no depth, I was brought forth. When there was no springs abundant with water, before the mountains had been shaped, before the hills, I was brought forth. When he had not yet made earth and fields or, or the world's first bits of soil, when he established the heavens, I was there. When he drew a circle in the face of the deep, when he made the firm, uh, when he made firm the skies above, this is Genesis language, right? This is all there. Uh, and he established the fountains of the deep. When he assigned to the sea its limits so that the waters might not transgress, transgress his commands, when he marked out the foundations of the earth, there, then I was beside him like a master worker, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing with him always. So, so hope my wisdom is an attribute of God that humans can tap into and we can actually possess. We can either go with the grain of the universe or against the grain of the universe. Essentially, the book of Proverbs is saying whenever you, you see anyone, it, Christian or non-Christian, making wise decisions, anybody can tap into this, by the way, right? It's not just a Christian thing. But if anybody is being generous um, or when you see someone choose to have sexual integrity uh, or those whose speech, the words that they choose to use, if they are uplifting words, they are drawing on wisdom. They are going with the, the grain of the universe. Again, here's a few of my favorites. For example, Proverbs 26, 17, right here. Like one who seizes a dog by the ears is a passerby who meddles in corals not his own. Now, now you got to kind of think about this. Yeah. So picture, picture a dog minding his business. And if I grabbed that dog by the ear and yanked it this way, classroom, in, in general, what do you think that dog is going to do to my hand? He's going to bite it. Yes, he, it will not go well for me. It will be, it won't go well. And, and why? Well, the, the, the dog has a mind of its own, and I, I am randomly wanting it to go this way, and I'm, I'm not doing it the best way, right? And, and so let's say, let's say that person name is James. Let's say James had that experience, and then he goes to the market, and he sees two people just yelling at each other, and he, he goes up to them, and, and he just, you know, he, I don't know. He wants to get in the middle of that and find out, or maybe, maybe help, probably not, but he goes in there, and he, he wants to just stir everything up. And hopefully they don't bite him, but, but hopefully, you know, the, it, it's not going to go well. It, it, he's gonna gonna cause a disruption and make it make it worse. But it's almost like James, if, if he did that, if he did both those things, he connects the dots, and it's like, oh yeah, it's kind of like when I did that to the dog, and it just and and, and yeah, it, then he wrote it down, and it went viral. I mean, that's essentially what 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 happened. God was in it too, but yeah. Um, anyway, here's a few more. Proverbs 14, 4, where there are no oxen, there is no grain, but abundant crops come by the strength of the ox. Now, again, with all these, you got to, you, you shouldn't read Proverbs fast. Like, you got to sit with it a bit. What I, what, when, when I read this, what I get is life is less complicated when you have, when you have a clean barn, you don't have to scoop poop you don't have to get hay and feed the ox you don't have to do any of that but there's no harvest there's there's n there's nothing there but if you have an ox 
You got to do the thing. Yeah, you got to scoop more poop and you got to feed it. You got to water it. But you're going to have a harvest. Sometimes you got to do what you don't want to do to get what you want. That And that's just, that's wisdom, right? That's, that's, that's exercise. Nobody wants to do this. Nobody likes it. But. Every doctor says, you know, exercise is beneficial. It's good. It's you, you'll live longer, right? So, uh, yeah. Anyway, l- let's keep going. Proverbs fifteen four. A gentle tongue is a tree of life. Ding ding ding. Genesis. Wow. Tree of life. Uh, now, what what what's he talking about? Oh my my tongue is a gentle tree of life. So. The words I use literally give life to others. What I do, how I construct my words. I am either building up or, it, it, it says, but perversion and it breaks the spirit. We've all felt that. We've all, we've all been on the other side of that where one word or phrase and that's all, it could wreck our weekend. This person said that. Th- a friend, a family member said this. Somebody on the internet that I don't even know said this. And it weighs on me. It, it hurts. We can give life or we can take life with our words. Proverbs 25 The purposes in the human mind are like deep water, but the intelligent will draw them out. You know, I was just talking to my wife that there's a lot of change going on in my life right now. We moved and this new job and everything, and and I... I want to get back into journaling. I, I, journaling, I'm off and on with it. Um, I know lots of guys that it, they just they love it. They need it. Um, but I know I need to get back into it B- because, because there's so many things that wash over us in, in the course of a day. And just let's, let's do this just for fun. Let's take stock today. When you woke up today, what did you feel? Were you excited to go to church? Hey, don't speak. <laughs> but, but, but seriously, just, just think about this. Uh, were you anxious? Was it drudgery getting out of bed? Were you sore, tired? Or yesterday. Think about yesterday. It was a beautiful Saturday. Were you anxious, hopeful, stressed, worried? What was going on? What surprised you yesterday? Was there something? What delighted you? What frustrated you? Did you lose your temper? How? Why? Did you become fearful or defensive at at any moment? How? Why? Were you lonely? Afraid? The purposes in the human mind are like deep water, and we never stop to just ponder. We're always going. What if, what if you slow down? I, and, I, and I should practice what I preach, I know. And I will, hold me to it, 20 minutes a day of journaling. What could it do for you, for your family? If you knew why <laughs> some of these things hit you. And, the, oh, you know. It, 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 if you traced it back to maybe this one word from this person, then you can let it go. Okay, I, I, I get it. But instead, we just go around angry and frustrated, and, and we just bump into others all day, and we don't know what's going on. And we take drugs, 
And, and I just wonder about this proverb. Here's, a, here's my last one. Okay. And, and it's, yeah, I love it. Uh, don't answer a fool according to his folly, or you will become just like him. Answer a fool according to his folly, or they will be wise in their own eyes. Now, what is going on here? Like, uh, they're meant to be side by side. It's not a contradiction, right? Like, it's meant to be there. So then you ask, why? Why is it meant to be there? Well, again, let's just, let's just look at real life. Um, let's say you're talking to your neighbor, okay? And it, it, you're talking, and it somehow slips in that they think that the earth is flat. Now, you, could, you have a decision to make there. Do you engage that, or do you stay silent? Because if you stay silent, does that mean you're agreeing with them, and they think that you think that, right? So you, you, you have to, may, maybe you do engage. It's, it's, it's one-on-one. You do it with love. You listen. You ask lots of, a lot, lots of questions. But then you kind of, you know, you, maybe you say, well, you know, my friend Jesse Mueller's a pilot, and he says this. What do you think, right? I mean, just, just that type of stuff. Now, uh, what if you're in Denver and you go to a convention, and you wind, you're getting a drink in the lobby, and you see it. It's a whole convention full of flat earthers. Okay, now, what do you do there? Do you go up to the mic, grab the mic, and say that you know condemn them? You, you, no, no, read the room, right? Like the, you're the minority in that. In that, and it, you, I guess you could. I guess you could if you want to spend all day debating and all that, or just read the room and know. How do you reason with somebody who's unreasonable? What is the best way? Sometimes you answer the fool. Sometimes you don't. Sometimes you, you just don't. You, you, don't uh, you don't have to stoop down to, to their level. You don't. You got to know where you're at in it. And that takes chokmah. It takes wisdom. Oh, I'm sorry, one more. Um, Proverbs 27, 17. This is short, but it's, yeah, I can't do Proverbs without it. As iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. We are built for relationships. We are wired for community, for accountability, so that we grow wiser and wiser through the years. We need each other. You need me, I need you. Iron sharpens iron. So, Okay, what are Proverbs not then? Okay, so Proverbs rely, the book relies on probabilities. If you fear God and do your best to follow after wisdom, things generally will go well for you. But if you do not fear God, if, if you don't honor him, if, you, if you're wise in your own eyes, if you just, if, if what feels good, if you do it, whatever, right? Life will tend to be hard for you, not go well with you. Uh, it'll be more of a struggle than it has to be. Uh, Martin Luther King Jr. had this famous quote. He, he says this, and do I, do I have that? Yeah, there we go. Um, the, the arc of history is long, but it bends towards justice. And, and he, he's right on, on several <laughs> reasons there, but... But really, the worldview of Proverbs is, is saying it's going to reward integrity. It's going to reward justice. Those that, that walk in love and justice and integrity. It's going to reward you. Um, but it, it's good to remember that Proverbs are not promises. Uh, they're they're not. I, here's here's two, and I don't know if I have them up here. I don't think I do, but but they're short. So just listen. Proverbs ten twenty seven. The fear of the Lord add life or adds length of life, but the years of the wicked are cut short. That's a proverb. Or and you all know this one if your parents train a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Now. I could probably pass a mic around and, and we could talk it about all those, all the stories about how those two proverbs are not true. You all know some, a godly Christian 
who died way too early. They were, they were living in the fear of the Lord, and they died too early. And you know, you know of you know, Christian young people that grow up that were here all their lives, and now they're not walking with the Lord. Now, I want to push back on, on that one just a little bit, train up a child in the way sh- they should go. Remember, tra- <laughs> training up doesn't mean just bring him to church, just take him to Awana. I, I don't even know if we all realize what training them up in the Lord really means. That's, that's a whole other sermon, and I'd love to, to, and I don't have a corner on the market figured out, but, but, you know, training in the home, mom and dad, training them, talking with them all the time about God, asking them questions, listening, training them is way more than just church. Anyway, um, so, um, ba, ba, ba. now, if, okay, if you were ever curious about what a person would look like if they embodied the principles of Proverbs, look no further than the last chapter, Proverbs 31. It's, it's fitting that the book of Proverbs starts with Lady Wisdom and ends with another woman who is our model person who stands in the gap and shows us how it's done. She is hardworking. Uh, We we have this uh, in verse 15 and 16 of the last chapter. She rises while it's still night. She provides food for her household. She, She tasks her servant girls. She considers a field and buys it. With the fruit of her hand, she plants a vineyard. She is the opposite of lazy. She helps the poor. We've got this in verse 20. She opens her hand uh, to the poor and reaches out her hands to the needy. But with all her business sense, she, she's not hard. She's generous. She speaks with words of wisdom. We got that in verse 26. Uh, she opens her mouth with wisdom and the teaching of, of kindness is on her tongue. She isn't lucky, right? She owes nothing to chance because her solid foundation is in the fear of the Lord. This is a life that is grounded in wisdom, who keeps coming back to this book. Now, no matter how old she is, she's going to come back, and she's going to live it out and practice it and hone it like skill. She's the model for us all. So the book of Proverbs is for everyone in every season of life. It is a guide for living wisely in God's good world. It it does. It provides a a general rule book, not the exceptions. It's like the, again, it's like the owner's manual, and we need an owner's manual. When I first got married, I I threw away all the owner's manuals. I didn't need them, and now I'm regretting it because I do. That, you know, the garbage disposal broke down. I need the owner's manual. And so, anyway, it's, yeah, it's good for us to have that. Now, next week, the next place we're going is the book of Ecclesiastes, which, so if, if Proverbs is about the general rule, Ecclesiastes is all about the exception to the rule, because sometimes evil people prosper. Sometimes the lazy people get rich, so get ahead. Sometimes the, the, the fool prospers. What then? Well, it's good that we have a book in the Bible addressing that as well. And so, without further ado, let me pray, and, and we'll, we'll, we'll get on with the next part. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your word. You have not left us orphaned or ab- abandoned without, without a very practical, practical, easy, accessible book, Lord. We, we, we never grow past Proverbs. We, we need this to, to walk in the world today, God. Help, help us to be like Proverbs 31, that, that woman that embodies these, these practices and, and these skills and behaviors so that we can be a source of life to, to everyone we, we come into contact with. And so thank you. Thank you for this church and for this time together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Well, thank you, Pastor Kyle, for your message to us from God's Word this morning. You know, this morning is Pastor Kyle's third Sunday as our senior pastor, and he is now leading us and teaching us how to walk in God's Word and in God's wisdom. And I'm really looking forward, Kyle, to these coming messages in, in August as we continue to talk about wisdom, maybe perhaps the most needed commodity in the United States today. But today is a special day, and our church leaders, along with all of you, that would be our entire church body, members or not, people who worship with us, celebrate and give thanks to God for calling Pastor Kyle and Ann and their family to be our senior pastor shepherd. We're going to formally commit them today to commission them, the way I put it, into this new ministry for years to come. So nearly two years ago, Pastor Doug Berkey told the elders that it was his intention to retire from full-time ministry at the end of June of 2021 and that we would need to begin to search for a new senior pastor. And that's quite a process. And so our church constitution spells out exactly um, the, the membership and the calling of the people uh, who make up those, those teams on those search committees. Our church formed a church committee to find the man that God would have to lead us into the future. You see, we are a church body that is governed by our members. And the word free in our name means that we are free to call any pastor that we feel God is uh, required of us, if you will. And uh, we do not have to submit to any other church hierarchy. We're free to do that. A pastor search committee was then formed in the fall of 2019 and actually early into January of 2020. And I want the members of our pastor search committee who found Kyle to come forward at this time. So, ladies and gentlemen, please come up. Um, we've got Ron Alshweet, and Ron has been here for 38 years. Ron serves as our chairman this year, and he was the chairman two years ago. Larry Brown was the chairman of our elder board, and he was selected by that board of elders to be the representative. We also constitutionally have a member of our Christian Education Board. And at that time, the Christian Education Board, those members believed that Dave Wiedemann, who was our chairman, would be the man to, to come and serve on, on our committee. As well, I'll just tell you, we, we had Angie Dickman. Angie couldn't be here today. But Angie was our member at large from all of you who we voted upon that, that uh, we could have, I think, the wisdom of a woman's voice. And since we were a majority of men, we discussed it among ourselves, and uh, we decided that we would like to have another lady. So we recommended to the general board that they recommend to our membership that we would include one of our deaconesses on this committee. And so Tabitha Wooden uh, kindly assented to, to be, come along with us guys and Angie, and uh, she's been a very valuable member of our committee. And myself, I was the representative from the general board. So Larry Brown was selected to be our chairman of that committee. And uh, he did an excellent job of not only keeping us together, but to keep us focused on our mission at that time and the fact that we needed to meet regularly. So we did that. So these folks standing here with me today began meeting in late January of last year and we met nearly every Monday night at 6 o'clock, whether it was in person here at the church or via Zoom for a while, for the next eight months. And along the way, we developed a job description that was approved by our membership. And we used that in our search process as we looked for the person that God would have to come here. As well, um, we sought some wisdom from other people. And we spoke with Pastor Noah Palmer who at that time was the um, director, if you will, the superintendent of our Midwest district in Kearney. 
We also spoke to several other pastors here in the Panhandle, as well as Pastor Berkey, as we sought their guidance and wisdom and knowledge um, as we sought our senior pastor. And to sum all of that up, ultimately, God led Pastor Kyle and Ann to seek that position. We had discussions, uh, several of them, uh, within our search committee. We also met with the general board, and Kyle and Ann did. And ultimately, you remember, we went to our membership at a special meeting, and we voted to call Pastor Kyle to come here and be with us as our senior pastor. He and Ann have served our church for 13 years, and that's incredible. Kyle has been both our youth pastor and our family pastor. And I'll tell you, youth pastors average two years on the job, and that's it. Kyle is remarkable for that, and, and Ann has stuck with him as well. And uh, that's very important to us. In those 13 years, we've come to know Kyle and Ann and love them very much. And that was uh, really one of the, another important part to our search. And so we called. We voted to call Pastor Kyle to come, but it didn't happen immediately, did it? We had a six-month transition. And uh, during that time of transition, Kyle, I think, really successfully handed off uh, much of his responsibility to our youth to his church sponsors or those youth sponsors. And we're really thankful for them. But he did an excellent job. And also during the past six months, we made Kyle get up and kind of change his schedule because Kyle would come up here and meet with the elders and Pastor Berkey at 6 o'clock on Friday morning. And uh, I know that was kind of hard and it was difficult um, during the school year. I know that for Ann uh, because somebody had to take Katie to school. And that wasn't going to be Ann. So Kyle did that with us. And um, we would meet together to pray for our physical needs, our, our spiritual needs of, of all of you in our church body, and then to prepare ourselves to participate in worship services that we get to do. And so our elders are very faithful men. And I would like at this time to have Ray Cox and Brent Jeffers come up because we were meeting uh, with Pastor Kyle. Uh, we've had uh, mul multiple meetings with him, but every, every uh, Friday we would meet together and, and pray. And so these two godly men that we have here today, um, they've got their own personal ministries that they invest their time and energy into, besides being a, a formal elder in our church. And I really appreciate them, and I know that all of you do as well. You know, at this time now, we have everybody up here, kind of our team, and I'll just tell you that these people represent you. Every one of them was elected by you, our membership, and our worshipers, and they've done a tremendous job. But I'd like to have Pastor Kyle and Ann and Katie and Charlie and Nora and uh, even Luke uh, to come at this time and just to stand before us. And as they come, I'm going to move this out of the way here. So, Tyler, I'm hot. I can hear that. Well, when we first found Kyle 13 years ago, Kyle was serving in the Bennington Bible Church as an intern in their youth program. He had received his bachelor's um, from Tabor College in Kansas, and he was looking forward to youth ministry. And it's amazing, when, when Kyle came as our youth minister, there was only one Larson. Um, but he had plans to be married to a lady by the name of Ann Berkelman, who had grown up in Naperville, Illinois. The two of them had met on a mission trip to Mexico uh, in the early 2000s. And, and so that's where Kyle and Ann met, was on the mission field, if you will, um, serving the Lord. A couple of months later, on August the 2nd, and Pastor Kyle, I don't want you to forget that date, August the 2nd, I think 2008, Kyle and Ann were married. And they have now been blessed by the Lord of four wonderful, remarkable children in this family. 
and, and we can think back with, with them that we were able to dedicate every one of those children right here on this platform. That's an amazing thing. They already have a, a great history uh, and a great amount of service to us. So Pastor Kyle and Ann have served in our youth ministries for 13 years, both of them. They have taught in Sunday school classes. They've participated, uh, well, Ann has, in MOPS. And Ann has been a leader of MOPS in the past, as well as Awana Ministries. And so they have a great history with us in this church, and that was really important to our pastor search team, that we would find someone who, uh, Kyle, you're an insider to us. We know you, and we appreciate you, and we know that everybody else would really want that. But Pastor Kyle, as well, has a very solid reputation in the community of Sydney. Um, when it was up and running, Pastor Kyle was uh, a part of our Cheyenne County Ministerial Association. Kyle also did some substitute teaching in school, and uh, maybe following in the footsteps of his father, Bob, he is a coach of championship cross-country teams, cross-country runner himself in college. But today, Kyle and Ann, it is our desire to commission you, to send you forth into our presence to, to be the senior pastor and the first lady, I could say that, of, of our church, our, our representatives. And so in the military, soldiers are sent out on missions that they have been called to perform by their, their leadership. And they need to be ready to go, to go wherever they're called, to do whatever they're called to do, whenever they're called to do it. Um, and all they really know, that's what they don't know, is that they are there to follow their leader's commands. And so in your case, Kyle and Ann, your leader is the Lord Jesus Christ, and he has called you to be our spiritual leader, our pastor shepherd, uh, here at the Evangelical Free Church of Sydney. And so I have a question uh, for you both, Kyle and Ann, and this is it. Have you fully and freely accepted God's call and commission to serve as the senior pastor and his wife at the Evangelical Free Church of Sydney. Yes. Wonderful. And I'm going to look at everybody else. And I'll ask every Christ follower in this room, or whether you're on Facebook and, and couldn't be here today, um, but wherever you are, do you commit yourself to loving, supporting, and encouraging the Larson family and to following Pastor Kyle's leadership in the coming years as he seeks to perform the duties as senior pastor of our church? And if so, say, I do. I do. So besides our affirmation this morning, Kyle and Ann, uh, we have a new district superintendent uh, for our Midwest district. His name is Pastor Colby Kinzer. And uh, he is going to speak to you this morning via video. So um, he's going to actually congratulate you on accepting this call. So, Hi, everyone. This is Goldie Kinzer. I'm the district superintendent of the Midwest District for the Free Church. And just a word this morning for Kyle as he's being installed. You know, a lot of pastors think that they are God's gift to the church. And well, Kyle, you are. Not in the sense that the arrogant say, but in the sense that God has given you to this church for a reason and for this time. And so I pray that, that God will bless your ministry richly as you make disciples together, as you reach the lost together, and that you will build deeper and deeper relationships for the cause of Christ. We are so glad that you are part of our district, part of the church, and mainly that you belong to Christ in serving his church. So we pray for you, especially during this day. God bless. Well, now Pastor Kyle and Ann and Katie and Charlie and Nora and Luke, uh, our elders are going to lead us in a prayer for each of you as we embark on a new chapter uh, in the life of our church, but also in your personal life. And so we've asked Ray Cox to pray for Kyle. Larry Brown is going to pray for you, Ann. And our brother Brent Jeffers is going to pray for, for your children. So... If we could just gather around, I'm going to hand that off to Ray.
and we could put our hands on Once Kyle and Ann. Bill forgot to mention his important role in all this. He talks about everybody all the time, but but Bill was very much a part of all you see here, right here this morning. So let's pray together this morning. We've come to a new time in the life of our church here in Sydney. We celebrate with thanksgiving for our heritage and recommit ourselves as a congregation of God's people to solemnly support Kyle in the work as a senior pastor here. We are truly thankful for the love Kyle has for you, Lord, and for your people. Give Kyle the energy to speak your words to us, Father, from this day forward. Let Kyle have passion and boldness to step forward with faith to accomplish your plans here in Sydney and beyond. We would ask, Lord, for you to give to Kyle your wisdom to choose words to meet the needs he must face daily and let Kyle have the fruits of the Spirit in his life so that he might see people here and all those he meets through your eyes. Let all who come in contact with Kyle see your name in him. We pray for his protection from Satan, protect him from sin, and give him encouragement daily. Lord, give all of us the committed heart to keep Kyle and your church in our prayers daily. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we know that this church is blessed beyond measure, and we thank you for this amazing family that you continue to let serve here in this church. And Father, we lift up Kyle and Ann and the kids. And for Ann, Lord, we just pray, knowing that you have blessed Kyle so much with the wife you've given him. You bless our church with the woman that Ann is and what she means, what she does to this church. And Lord, we would pray for, for her for strength to not just fulfill helping serve in the church, but just being a servant for Kyle as he serves, as he's going to be busy, as he may have to do things now that in the past he wouldn't have had to do, and it's going to take time away from the family. So we just pray for uh, you, Lord, to give her the strength to take care of her family, to take care of Kyle, Pray for her for ministry, whatever form that looks like, whether it's serving in the church somewhere or just serving at home, taking care of her home. Lord, we just pray for her for that. And Father, we just thank you for what she brings to Kyle for her, her knowledge and the way they complement each other. Lord, and just pray that that will continue in their lives, that they will grow together closer in you and continue to put you at the center and serve you first, Lord. So I pray for her, all that she does, all that she brings us. And Lord, we just pray for you to wrap your arms around her and protect her from all things, from Satan, from uh, from people that don't need to be around her, from just guide her and protect her. Lord, we would pray that, and Lord, we thank you again for bringing her to Kyle and to this church, and we ask your blessings on the time that they will serve here within this church, and we pray for many years to come for Kyle and Ann and the kids. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Wow. I get to do the praying for the children. And what an honor that is. And we just heard a little bit ago when we said that uh, we love you. And I want 
We want your kids to know that. We love you. We care about you. We want the very best for you. Let's pray. Oh, our precious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for this opportunity that we have to be able to gather here, to be able to pray for this family. But especially this morning, we just pray for these children. Oh, dear God, we just pray for little Katie. Oh, dear God, be with her, for Charlie, for Nora, and for Luke. What precious children they are, and I just pray as a congregation that we will continue to lift them up in prayer. That we will love on them, that we will care for them, that we will just be with them, be their greatest supporters as they go through this time. As their lives have changed today in a special way, and we just thank you for them. And dear God, I do pray for Pastor Kyle and for Ann. We just pray for them as they raise these children. We just ask that you will give them wisdom, as we spoke about this morning. It'll be wisdom that comes from you. And dear God, we just thank you. We thank you for this family. We pray all these things in your precious name. Amen. And so, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, we present to you Pastor Kyle Larson, the senior pastor of the Sydney Evangelical Free Church and his family. It seems fitting to have everyone stand for our, what will be our benediction song here. And I think this is a fitting scripture for really what's being called out here which is from Deuteronomy 32.3. I will proclaim the name of the Lord. Oh, praise the greatness of our God. Let's sing, Oh, praise the name. <laughs> 